So, so, so you've um, you paired up some uh, some wines for us to, yeah, so to, look to, at, to um, share a couple of things. Let's have a look at these. So <coughs> these are all small batches of things I'm just trying to do um, yeah. some different fun things. Obviously, you know, these days um, with wines and packaging things and the rest yeah. of it, it gives a bit of a bit more creative freedom as well to yeah. um, to use some different labels and bottles and all the rest of it. Yeah. So we're just going to look at two straight Grenaches here. Um, yeah. one Immediately, of the, very different colours. Yeah, so we're going from... Um, in theory, different regions on these ones. Um, yeah. So this will be, we can sort of work in a, a theme on these. So I was looking at Grenache to me, and that's why I started making wine with Grenache. I love it. Um, yeah. And I don't like to see a winemaker's imprint on the wine to a point, but in regards to let the fruit show, but you can influence yeah. it by doing different things. So yeah. Grenache has always been, you know, bigger buried. Um, in the Barossa, we tend to have the skins thin out a bit because of the heat. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to do, um, I was using a lot of whole bunch recently to add tannin to Grenache. And I yep. thought, hang on, let's find a vineyard I can pick a bit earlier. It's got a more, um, <clears throat> I guess, a thicker skin yep. that I can then uh, take the stalks out and just do some um, some berry ferment. So yep. this one's the first one, the bluebird. Bluebird's the um, symbol of happiness. So I just wanted, Grenache yep. can be happy, you know, it can be fruity and lovely and it's a, a fun, good drink. It's a bloody fun wine. So that's um, why, um, that's where that, the name comes from. Um, yep. This is a vineyard in the Adelaide Hills. So we're yep. just going a bit further south from the Barossa. Um, this is pretty. It's an east-facing slope, so on a decent slope. Um, yep. That just gets hand-picked, de-stemmed, and I've rejigged the de-stemmer I use that yep. it just gets de-stemmed into a bin directly. Yep. So then you get a whole lot of whole berries in it. Yeah, um, yeah, and this yeah. just gets hand-plunged over a few weeks and whatever. So you're picking up some finer tannin from it, but I wanted to not have it heavy. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've got ideas about whole berries, but when, when you go whole berry, um, what does it do for tannin extraction for you um, and, and, and during during your ferments and, and things like that? I think, I mean, as it's in early days, you're getting a bit of that carbonic fermentation in the berry because you've yep. screwed the whole berry. Yep. And then as your alcohol builds up, obviously your skins are going to start breaking down a little bit. So yep. then you've got the contact um, with the skins and that's where you're going to get your tannin from and your yep. seeds. Yep. So to me, it's how aggressive you plunge it or how long you live more. It's about time with skin tannin for me. Yep. So. Um, so you can leave on skins for six, seven weeks, you know, yeah. keep building that tannin profile yeah. to it, yeah. or you pluck it off early and then you can control yeah. the amount of tannins that come yeah. into it. So for me, it's about having fruit that's ripe, but still has a, th it's about a thickness of skin for me. Yeah. So as you get riper, you thin, your skin thins out, you're going to have less tannin in that. So, yeah. so I, this, I do a harvest in America every year with a mate and make a bit of wine over there. Yeah. And he uses a whole cluster in everything. Yeah. And the only thing he doesn't use whole cluster in is Grenache. And I said, where yeah. I'm from. It's almost the reverse. What are you doing? Yeah. And he's, he's, you bite his Grenache berry, and that was so yeah, thick skin. Yeah, yeah, I went, yeah. I now understand it. So that's when I went searching for this vineyard to find Isn't that great? a similar thing. Uh, you've yeah. gone across, and as we were saying before, yeah. you disrupted your head a bit. Yeah. And you've gone, right, I need to try something. Yeah, <laughs> off you go. Yeah, yeah. Great. So that was about vineyard searching. So this is, so that's a, it's got the weirdest trellis system. I'm, I'm trying to find a name for it, but they've got a vine, um, it's an Italian grower, so it might yeah. be an Italian. Um, so, so you've got a vine that goes quite low to the ground, and then yeah. the next vine, Goes above it, so it's separate uh, trellis. But there's no actual official name for it, I don't think. It's just yeah, that yeah, yeah, there's two yeah. different trellis heights. So you walk through the vineyard, and the top layer is, I mean, I'm pretty short. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right up here, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's bizarre. It's, it's almost like a. Um, but they're not putting any vertical shoots or anything. It's just falling over. Still. Oh yeah. So it's just yeah, bizarre. Wow. It's so almost it's like just, a, if they they got a nice patio, it I guess if they wanted to. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's, I, can, I can see why that that could work really well, depending on how closely you planted and how many buds you're, you're, yeah. you're holding. So it's quite closely planted, and then yeah. one along the bottom, one over the top. Yeah, so, so you're getting more air through the canopy yeah. and potentially spreading some light through, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So wow. it's interesting. It's very different from Brasovita culture, where it's. Do you, you get? Do you have to pick the bottoms separate from the top? <laughs> No, that's interesting. Because, you know, I just, I'm just wondering as if there's a whole shade goes out of the bottom or, yeah. you know, it's uh, with that kind of height difference or... It anyway. might. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I think, I mean, I don't notice any... I'm trying to... Next time I'm sampling it, but it, it seems to think that the, the lower stuff doesn't have as much colour as the top, but I don't yeah. know whether that's sunlight thing yeah, 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 or yeah. whatever it is, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so this is... All the wines are just... Um, they ferment on their own and they go through a basket press and yeah. on this one... I'm using mostly larger oak formats or yep. <clears throat> no oak at all um, yep. for this sort of style of wine. So that that's a fun sort of early release, bright green ashes. That's what I've wanted to show in this, and then mm. probably the, the complete opposite on the next one. Um, mm. That's a, a 150 year old vineyard where the yep. Eden Valley meets the Brossa. Yep. Um, it's on a sandy base soil with clay underneath. Um, so the roots go into the clay. It sort of retards the growth a little bit. But this yep. one's 100 percent whole cluster. Just pick it, walk on yep. it, and build tannin. Um, from yep. the whole clusters, and then you get a, a much more serious um, style. I leave it on skins there for two to three weeks, and so you're getting a bit more of a structured, more muscular style, but still with that little bit of refinement to it. Mm. I'll tell you what, a bloody fun pair of booze. Um, 
I love the elegance and the finesse and the perfume that's coming out of the Adelaide Hills. Um, lovely bits of violets and spice and you know some of that sort of Judy Grenache character. Um, yeah, just that that is a banging drink. It's just delicious just, drink yeah. right now. And so is this. But yeah. it's completely different. Yeah. So you, you've gone to a style that is almost, you know, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's inkier on the nose to me than on the palate, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is interesting. So there's a, there's a density to it and it's, it's, it is brewing and it is a bit more sort of kind of coiled up at the moment, uh, particularly on the nose, but you get on the palate and there's just this big boom explosion of, of, yeah. um, of lovely fruit, richness. Um, I find the tannin's mouth coating as well, you know, yeah. so it gets all around the mouth, your front of your mouth as well as you're drinking it. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you said that because that's yeah. exactly, exactly what I was thinking because there's a difference in tannin. There's, some, there, there's a, a, a layering of tannin in yeah. it. You know, you know how you get layering of fruit. For me, sometimes, you know, good wines, you get layering of tannin as well. There's a density and depth of tannin. Yeah. And, and it shows in that wine. And it's, it's quite an evenness of, it, of tannin as well yeah. through, through the palate, particularly well, talking, front middle. Yeah, talking about our common friend Pete Shell, Spinifex yeah. Wines, he came from a European background and looking at the wines you were drinking over there before. You know, a lot of times it's about, we don't talk about in Australia how the mouth, how the wine feels in your mouth. It's about mm. what how fruity it is and what it mm. tastes like. And a lot of times, if you're making textural whites or textural rosé, these sort of things or something like this, it's also about the different levels of the town and how it feels and all the rest of it. And so that's mm. where, I guess, a lot of times in the past, we've always looked at how fruity is it. We haven't sort of, how does it feel? How does it make yep. you feel in your mouth? What does it make you yep. want to eat? Or, you know, does yep. it make you salivate? Does it not? And yep. so that's what I like about tannin and wines is that it can be there but it can be just as interesting as what flavors you're tasting as well oh absolutely and i think i mean and you can see flavors have been imparted through this as well you know there's a little yeah. spice coming from those stalks yeah and, yeah yeah you know, and so i mean it's it, it's interesting as uh, i think uh it's, it was it'd be coming on uh, 20 years ago now that um my my, my shift in wine making switched or, or or changed proportion yeah to Heavy weighting on mouthfeel and texture, yeah. and uh, I'm loving seeing that happen through the industry and in the and, and particularly in the Barossa. We see yeah. a lot of people focus on texture and mouthfeel, yeah. and it was, it was almost a missing link. Uh, yeah, because well, yeah, it was about how big it could be and not about yeah the drinkability yeah, 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 yeah. of it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, those are, are both. And and going back to what you were saying, eminently drinkable now. Yeah, uh, and um and and I, I think particularly just 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 a few more months, you know, six yeah. months, twelve months, and 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 they would be. Twice the wine that they are now, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't mean. Yeah, and they're and they're but they're, they're absolutely delicious right now. So hey, um, thanks for sharing those. And a great contrast between a cooler and a warmer Grenache. And uh, it'd be it'd be great for anyone out there. We always talk about uh, tasting wine in context and with contrast. So context here, two 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 different Grenache made by the same guy, two different regions is is is, is the contrast. And um, this is a great way to start to get your head around Grenache. Um, grab a couple of other ones and, and taste them together. So, hey, thanks for thanks for sharing those. Um, they're definitely going on the list. That's sweet. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're three for three. So, three. Uh, <laughs> let's keep on rocking through. So. <laughs> Do we bring any more wine? Yeah. <laughs>